Cars to me, I mean, they mean freedom, freedom of expression, I'd say. Cars have always been a means to get somewhere, to explore. I always say that cars are like fashion to me, right? They're like shoes for people in New York. This is a way that I express myself, that I find my car to be an extension of myself, and it's just a way to make that possible. I've been into cars as long as I can remember. Even before I could walk, I was playing with Matchbox cars. My parents thought it'd be a phase, and I kind of just compounded after that. When I got older, I realized I could have one of my own. That really is when things launched. My brother, who's a couple years older than me, he got a GTI when I was in middle school. I learned how to drive stick on that thing, and that really opened my mind into what it could mean to have a car that's not only an expression of yourself, but that's fun to drive, fun to be around, and a joy to work on and learn things while you're at it. The first time I actually got interested in working on cars, my brother, again, he was lowering his car, right? So we were fitting lowering springs on his GTI. But I realized, like, you know, this isn't that hard. You can look at a couple YouTube videos, have a friend who's probably done it before, and then figure it out. And there's this crazy sense of accomplishment you get afterwards, where you say, I did this. I made this myself. This is something that I can feel accomplished with because I put my mind to it, I learned something new, and it really became addicting. Prior to this car, I had a turbo Subaru. It was kind of a piece of crap. It broke a lot. I put a lot of money into it, wasn't very fast. And I wanted something that I could do everything in. I wanted to track it. I wanted to be able to road trip in it. So I had to be able to like carry all my stuff in it, take it to the track, sleep in the back of it. And this really filled all the boxes. I spent about three months looking for one of these cars. I ended up flying out to Denver to buy it. I shipped it back, and from there it was kind of off to the races. I kept it stock for a while. I learned from my mistakes of my previous car, like don't get into something too quickly, right? Learn what it is, drive it for a while as it is, and then about a year into it, I started modifying it. I went to school in upstate New York. I actually, my first model in this was an exhaust, and I changed it in the dorm room parking lot in February. I had to clear a parking lot full of snow, I had to clear a spot, and I jacked it up on ramps and two jack stands, and I changed the exhaust in like negative degree weather. The very first night I put it on, the exhaust, I was driving through town, I stopped at a light, and a guy who was waiting at the bus stop came up to me and was like, I didn't know that this was this car, I thought this was a sports car coming, like it sounds so insane. I've done track days in it, I've been to four different racetracks, I've done road trips across the country, I lived in LA for a bit in the beginning of 2020, and I drove it back when COVID started from LA to New Jersey. It's been this gateway for me into, into the world, right? And that started when I was a kid. I loved biking around. I worked at a bike shop in high school, and that was my vehicle, so to speak, of you know getting around and, and exploring. This car has become that. I, as a person, I never stop. I can never sit still. Any day of the week, you'll find me you know, in a different state all of a sudden, doing something in the city, driving to West Virginia for an event, driving to New York for an event, coming back to Boston, there's really nowhere where I haven't been in this car. It's been this exploration for me, right? Me and the car together. This is definitely a forever car because of that. My previous car I thought might be, but in reality, like this thing, we've been through so much together now. I've been through engines, we've been through tracks, we've been through snowstorms. I've taken this thing through two and a half feet of snow up to the mountains to go snowboarding. And I've taken it to the beach. I've taken it on the dunes. You know, it's just, it's been everywhere. It's taken me to these places. It's been part of what I'm doing. And it's really just been this experience together. It's really become a partner for me. It's become this extension of myself. People know me and they know my car. Like there's, it, it, it's hand in hand. Like I, this is an association with me. There's nothing else that I find that can really do it. It's such a good exemplification of myself. It's versatile, it's sporty, it's adventurous, it's practical, right? There's so much there that is of use and so much there that is fun to have, right? But at the end of the day, like it'll still get you home. It's still reliable, right? This thing, you know, I've driven it 12 hours straight. Nothing happened to it. I've driven on the track all day, driven it home and it's, it's been great. I love quirky cars. I love weird cars. I won't take a picture of the Lamborghini in the car show. I'll take a picture of the foreign market VW van that I, I, that I saw. That's why is that there, right? People think I'm weird for that, but I love it. And that's what this is. 
When I first got this thing, my roommates in college were like, oh no, you had a turbo Subaru and now you went and bought a dad wagon? Like, what are you doing with the station wagon? Like, this isn't cool. Slowly I built it up to this point where now like, oh, I get it now. And I think that's what attracts me to it. Like, you don't see it. I never see these. And that's not the reason why I got it, right? It's fun to drive, but it's cool to pull up at a traffic light and somebody rolls down the window and goes, oh my God, where did you find this? How did you get one? I can't believe it's manual. There's nothing better than getting that kind of reaction from somebody from what is just a gray Volvo station wagon. My job, I'm on a computer all day. It's very in the head, hands on the keyboard. There's nothing that I can really do with my hands and I'm a very active person. So being able to work in my car was this way of balancing, right? I've got a lot of yin, but not a lot of yang. This was a way that I could literally get my hands dirty and work on something that was tangible, something that was real, right? I work in software all day. When that's all I do during the day, I wanna make sure I have something to do otherwise. And this has become sort of like a, a painting for me. It's become this way to express not only myself and my interest in cars, but what I can do and what I can accomplish. And I've, I've learned a lot here. It's a mid-2000s European car. So there's a lot more technology, a lot more weird mid-2000s electrical systems that can go wrong. But I really learned through that process, you can take the foundations you learned from the basics and apply it to something like this, right? And it's really the same thing. There's a lot of apprehension with a lot of people on working on their own car. And I'm not a professional mechanic at all, but you know, I'm definitely a driver mechanic. But it's been this journey for me to learn how to actually not fear working on these types of things. I mean, I, I apply it to work a lot, right? When I started the job at The Drive and at the parent company of the, for The Drive, I knew nothing about websites, web development. I knew the basics of technology. I knew a little bit of coding, but I didn't have any experience in, in web development. But through my experience with this, working on it, problem solving, and making sure that I knew to research the proper things, to take the time to learn it before I messed something up or had to spend more money to fix this thing, I was able to apply that to work. And I felt a lot more comfortable putting my mind to something and knowing that I can figure it out, even if I don't know what it is now, because I was able to do it so much with this. This video that we're doing right now is incredibly special to me because I grew up watching The Drive. When Tune first started, I was in middle school. And I was like, damn, how can I do that? How can I be a part of that situation? I work for The Drive's parent company, and I'm really proud of the work I do there because it's my contribution to the car culture. This is my like stake in the car community right now. This is the difference that I'm making, and I feel like having that being part of my job is special. And that's another reason why I'm so happy to be part of this community is like, I can make a difference in the community that I'm a part of outside of work while I'm here. I found my spot here, right? I found my spot in terms of working in this community and being a part of this bigger thing. The automotive community is amazing. They're so generous, they're so kind, and being able to contribute to it in this way has been, has been nothing but rewarding.